In this video, we'll talk about how to test for differences in regression functions across groups and how to use the F-test or the Chow test to determine which model we should use. So earlier we've seen something like this where we have um, log wage regressed on experience and education. In this model, notice we don't make any distinction between um, males or females, or we're not really looking at differences between females and males. However, if we introduced and we, if we introduced uh, everything above and we added a, a separate term, a delta naught uh, female here, that would give us the differences between um, wages for the two groups holding experience and education constant. Uh, we could also introduce a more complicated model which has interactions between uh, quantitative variables and uh, dummy variables such as female, right? So our, our job is to determine which model makes more sense, um, whether it's this one or this one or, or this one. And we can go about um, debating that um, using F-tests. So one of the um, ideas is to look at whether the differences are jointly zero. So here we are talking about all of the deltas. So we go back and check what the deltas are. And the deltas are basically these coefficients where we are actually making, making a distinction between um, females and males, um, whether it is looking at the returns to education or college education based on gender or the returns to experience based on gender or the returns um, are not returns but just um, differences based on gender itself. So um, this is a version of a Chow test to test for the equality of the regression functions across the two groups. So in case this is true then we don't need to include those um, uh, those differences, right? So we are basically here testing for joint significance of the dummy variables defining the groups as well as the interaction terms. So this is a more gener generic way of writing um, out your regression uh, function where y depends, oops, y um, depends on the quantitative variables, x1 through xk, but also depends on um, the dummy variable w, and then you have the interaction terms for each of the k explanatory, um, or k quantitative explanatory variables. And so you can use a standard f-test for the k plus one exclusion restrictions. And the k plus one exclusion restrictions would mean that we are setting all of the deltas equal to zero. So in also including the delta on, on your uh, group. So the dummy variable that's in indicating your group. So typically you would notice that, you know, in, in models where we're trying to estimate um, salary on female and a bunch of other variables, the Chow, the Chow statistic or the F statistic will strongly reject. Uh, but typically that rejection happens because delta naught is significantly different than zero. Um, so sometimes it's, it's of more interest to allow for... Um, a joint test, which is just testing the differences for those uh, interaction terms, okay? And so we're not talking about delta naught here. We're just setting delta one through delta k equal to zero. So there are, when we take this idea to the, to an example and we work with um, data, we can use two ways to do this. So we can um, use an F-test. And for the F-test, remember, we need 
an unrestricted regression and a restricted regression. So we're basically going to think about a regression of, of this form where we are not making a distinction between males and females. And we're going to call this regression a pooled regression because um, we're not making a distinction. Males and females are pooled into this regression. Versus uh, we're going to think about the same regression and we are going to estimate two regressions, um, one for females. So if females equals one, we're going to estimate this regression. And then we're going to estimate another one where we set females equals zero. OK, that is going to be the regression for males. So that's what we want to do. So the first thing is to pool the data, right, and estimate a single regression. And this is going to be your restricted model where we've made no distinction between females and males. And that is going to produce a restricted sum of squared residuals. So we're going to just call this SSRP, OK, and P is signifying, uh, signifying pool. Put the, that it is a pool regression. And the degrees of freedom um, from the pool regression is, uh, are going to be n minus k minus 1 because that's what you've, um, because you've estimated k plus 1 um, parameters. The second thing you want to do is estimate the regression on the two groups. So um, if there were two groups, let's say females and males, then we're basically estimated two different um, regressions and getting the sum of squared residuals from there. So the sum of squared residuals for the unrestricted models is going to just be the sum of these uh, uh, sum of squared residuals that we obtained from these two regressions. And that is going to have uh, different degrees of freedom. So let's say we had n1 females in in our sample, then the first regression is going to be estimated using um, or basically the sample size would be n1 because that's just for females and then n2 is going to be for males such that n1 plus n2 equals n, right? Where n is your total where everybody's pooled. So you're basically estimating those two regressions. And then your F statistic is basically going to be pretty similar um, to what, what it was before, where we said that the sum of squared residuals is going to be higher. Remember, it's going to be higher for your restricted regression, typically. If, if your model is uh, if your model is not correctly specified right so uh, we want to basically test if this is the case if there is a significant difference between the restricted and unrestricted regressions and here we've estimated because there were two groups we've estimated two different uh, regressions for uh, one for females, one for males, and we've added the sum of squared residuals in this case. Um, so here the F statistic is going to be the difference between the sum of squared residuals from your pool regression and the sum of squared residuals from your unrestricted regressions uh, divided by the exclusion restrictions, which are K, and then um, you're dividing it by the sum of squared residuals from your unrestricted regression um, divided by the uh, degrees of freedom, okay? In which case this is n minus 2 times k plus 1. So where does this come from? This is basically saying you estimated n1 minus k minus 1. You estimated k plus 1 uh, re uh, parameters in your regressions with the females. And then for males, it was n2 minus k minus 1. So if you add these up, you get n1 plus n2 minus 2 times k plus 1, right? And this is just equal to n minus 2 times k plus 1. So that's where that denominator is coming from. And so once you know that, you can actually use the f distribution to look at 
the um, whether the F statistic is significant or not. Okay, so we can apply this um, to the example we're very comfortable with now uh, because we've seen this data set before to beauty. Okay, so the first your first um, approach would be to get the pooled rig uh, sum of squared residuals, which is basically saying uh, that there is no difference between men and women. And then we're going to construct another SSR to get the differences between men and women, see whether those differences are uh, significant or not. Okay, So we want to test that th whether there is uh, no difference between men and women. Okay, So this is how we can proceed in R. So um, hoping that you've, you know how to load the data and we've loaded uh, the beauty data set already um, using the Woolrich package, you can regress, you can uh, construct a regression underscore pool. I'm just calling it pooled so you remember what this is. We're basically constructing a linear model where log wage now depends on below average looks, above average looks, these are dummies, right? Um, on education experience and experience squared, right? So here we've not made any distinction between whether the person is female or male, okay? And then we can see the summary here, and we can see that um, uh, many of these uh, coefficients are significant, okay? Now, there's um, multiple ways of um, subsetting your data. Um, when you want to only regress the same, you want to do the same regression that we did here on females only and males only, right? So we can basically construct a subset of our data. We can call it beauty fem, um, which is beauty fem female. Um, and we can use the function subset on our data set called beauty and give it a condition. So we're basically saying construct another data set, call it beauty fem, which is a subset, which is a subset of our data set, original data set beauty, and only include values where female takes the value of one. So this is basically going to be our the subset of our data where we are only considering females. Okay. Similarly, we can construct beauty male, which is a subset of our um, original data set beauty, where female does not equal one, right? So the way to write it, right, does not is in this way, right? And that's pretty common across different programs. So this is basically saying, Whenever female does not take the value of one, include the include those values in our data set. You could also set it equal to zero if you think if you want this condition to be uh, satisfied, then we could also have done that. Okay, so this is just going to be male. So you could do it two ways here. Okay, so now that we have um, constructed these two different data sets, we can go ahead and regress the same um, equation, but now we're going to set uh, the data set to be different. So here we're regressing this for females, right? So I'm going to give it a name that's intuitive, regression underscore females. And then I can also um, construct a similar regression for males, okay, where I say data is equal to beauty male. Okay, so notice here, um, we basically look at our, um, our, our values. This is going to be, this is different, right? This is different than the pool regression, right? Um, so now we can basically extract, we can basically extract what the sum of squared residuals is from our pool regression in this way. So first we are extracting the residuals 
we're squaring them and then we are taking the sum, right? So lots is going, these, these are two, three things that are going on in here. So we're extracting the residuals, squaring it, and then summing it. And that's what the sum of squared residuals is, right? Similarly, we can do it for the two other regressions that we created. Now we can use the, the F statistic, which is right here, right? And construct that given the sum of squared residuals. So here, the F stat, I'm just calling it F stat, is basically going to be um, uh, this expression, which is really coming from that um, formula that we have. So let's say the F statistic is 52.03. Um, you can look at the p-value of the F statistic in diff this way. So if you know the exclusion restrictions and you know the degrees of freedom that we have from our unrestricted model, you get a p-value of zero, which is basically telling us there is a difference between males and females, okay? And we can also calculate what is the critical value um, for this um, F statistic, right, which is three. So if the F stat is 52 and the critical value is three, we are definitely rejecting the null. Okay, so what does that mean? If we strongly reject that the two log wage equation functions are the same for men and women, then it makes sense for us to actually include those. Okay, so we can also um, just allow for an inter intercept shift and test whether all slopes are the same, right? So that would just mean that we would add female to the pool regression and re-estimate the model, and then we would have interaction terms with female in the unrestricted regression, and then we would do the F-test. Now you would again see that the you know F test would fail to reject the null, um, or not again, but you would see that the uh, F test would not be rejected in this case. Um, so we would then conclude that these data signal that we are okay with an intercept shift only, um, rather than interacting. Um, female with all of the other quantitative variables. Okay, so the advantage of this approach um, with interactions that we've seen before is that when we are discussing heteroscedasticity, we can modify um, these um, regression models to allow for any type of unknown heteroscedasticity that's appearing in our regression. Um, even though we are assuming that there is homoscedasticity in our regression, we can always relax that and we'll see that later.